Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to make the VFX for this video. It's the video I've released last time and in case you haven't seen it, please go and check it out. Uh, to give you a context, I've made a similar video a while ago showing that technique from Trafalgar Law. Uh, I've made that video for fun to keep busy while I was injured. Then a few people came to see the video and asked for a tutorial. And uh, I'm sorry I'm a bit late, but here I am. As I've lost the rushes from the previous video, I took that opportunity to make a new version, uh, hopefully a better one. Uh, however, in the previous version, I mainly used After Effects, while in this new version, I've mainly used Blender. So in this tutorial, I will mainly uh, show how I've done this new version in Blender. But uh, I will also explain at the end how I've done the previous version uh, with After Effects. Uh, so the plan for the tutorial, uh, to keep things organized, I will divide this tutorial into six parts. Uh, the first part, I will show you how to um, set up the environment, uh, the camera position, to the lighting, and other settings to get ready to render something. Uh, in the second part, we are gonna make some smoke, some fluid simulation. In the third part, we are gonna work on the shield, the fourth part is going to be about compositing. We will take the effects we have done previously and uh, try to blend them with our, uh, the footage that we have shot. The fifth part, I will show you how I've done the other shots, uh, namely the one where I cut my head. And the last part, uh, as a bonus, it's for those who still want to know how I've done the previous version with After Effects. Okay, so let's get started. Here is our white shot. We are gonna mainly work on this white shot as it's uh, where we can see the main effects. In this first part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to position the camera in order to recreate the perspective of the environment you have shot. At the end, we'll have some fun adding a 3D model in our scene. So this is the rush for our white shot. I exported that part as an image sequence and I advise you to work with uh, image sequences as well. Okay, so um, our white shot is a static shot. Uh, the camera is not moving, so we don't need to do any tracking. We can work on the first frame, last frame, or any frame actually, and uh, it's gonna apply to the whole shot. In order to recreate the environment and put something that fit in the scene, we need to find out the camera placement. So, how to place the camera? There is a very good tool called FSpy. The link is in the description. You need to go and download it. There are two files you need to download. The software itself and the add-on for Blender. When you open FSpy, you just need to drag and drop an image. And because my image sequence is in EXR and FSpy doesn't read EXR, I have converted the first frame into a JPEG. So, drag and drop. Once the image is open in SPY, you can align the axis with whatever you can find in your environment. Let's say, for example, I want to use the um, x-axis to be on this edge. Then for the other x-axis, I'll use the, the bottom of the building. Uh, for the other one, uh, let's try something vertical for the green one. Then something else vertical would be this. So it has managed to work out uh, a 3D space with a coordinate system. However, the vertical axis, the green one, here represent the Y axis. But in Blender, the vertical axis is actually the Z axis. So we need to change this not being the Y, but the Z axis. So Z axis, yeah. Uh, but now the Z axis is pointing downward. And I want it to point up Otherwise, the world uh, in Blender would be upside down. So choose minus Z. Here we go. Now we got the camera placement in a 3D coordinate system that matches the one in Blender. If you want, you can check your alignment with uh, some guide. I like using the XY grid to simulate the floor or anything horizontal. You can see that uh, everything is good. Then when you are happy, save the file. Uh, 
Now let's open Lender, delete everything. Uh, then make sure you have activated the add-on for SPY. You need to go here uh, in Edit Preferences, click uh, Add-on, and uh, SPY. Okay, cool. If you don't see SPY, you need to install it. It's the second file I told you to download. So go and get it. I think it's called uh, Blender SPY SPY Blender. Uh, yeah, this one, SPY Blender. You don't need to unzip it, huh? you can uh, install it straight like this and make sure it's um, activated. Once the add-on is enabled, you can go to File, Import, and you have a new option for SPY. Click on it, get the file you have previously saved when you have done the axis alignment. Then a camera has been imported with the reference image in the background. And here we can see that the camera has been put in um, 3D scene in a specific place and if you go to camera properties yeah here you can see your image uh, now let's add some object in the scene to simulate the environment for example uh, let's start with a plane to represent the floor scale it up yeah uh, then then uh, add a box to represent the characters uh, move it up G Z 1 S, Shift Z, scale it down to get a better to get a better shape, and uh, that's gonna be the guy on the left. So G Y, G X, and we can already see something strange. The box is uh, about two meters high, and um, now it looks like um, this guy. It's me, by the way. It looks like I am one meter which uh, which is not the case i am one meter 70. <laughs> so the box is too high and means that the camera is too close to the box we need to move the camera back however we don't want to mess up the alignment we have managed to get with uh, f spy so how can we do that how can we move the camera without messing up the alignment uh, first, let me split the screen so that you can see from another view. Then press N, and here, view, look camera to view. And uh, then look on the right side, you will see if you scroll up or down, you can see on the top view, the camera moves forward or backward. Okay, like this. Now the proportion looks correct, but we need to translate the camera so that the box covers um, the character. And uh, again, I don't want to mess up with the alignment. So to do that, press shift, hold it, and then click hold on the middle mouse button, and then move it. Now it's much better. The box is still uh, too high, but that's because I'm not two meters high. Uh, I think you could reference some distance directly in SPY, but um, I'm used to do it in Blender. And sometimes, when even when I reference it in SPY, I still need to move the camera in Blender, so I do it straight in Blender. I prefer to do it straight in Blender. So when you are done with the camera position, don't forget to unlock here. Otherwise, when you move in the viewport, everything is going to mess up. So let's add another proxy for the other guy. Shift D, G, X, G, Y. Okay, yeah, and uh, it's a good time to save the file, actually. Um, don't forget to do that. Of course, uh, I should have done that earlier. Now let's do some setting for rendering, and then we'll add the HDRI. So uh, render engine, uh, Let's go straight to cycles. Uh, GPU, as I got a RTX graphic card. Uh, FPS, 25. I choose mm, 25 for me. You can choose whatever you want. But uh, for me, because I'm in France, I choose 25. And uh, the video I've shot is 25. And yeah, by the way, I'm French, by the way, in case you haven't recognized the accent. Asian looking guy with a French accent. 
uh, and, uh, and then put a path for export. Okay, now you want to light our scene with uh, HDRI. You can go to this website, it's called Polyhaven. Here, click HDRI. And you got plenty of HDRI that are free to download. But uh, there are so many HDRI and uh, how to choose them. Let's say, for example, I get a random one. Okay, I downloaded this um, Autumn Garden. This HDRI called Autumn Garden. Uh, download. Uh, Okay, 4K is enough. Then back in Blender, uh, I use this window, uh, Shader Editor, select World, Shift A, and then Environment Texture. Not Image Texture, huh? Environment Texture. Uh, it's not the same. And then select the HDI you have downloaded. So the HDI has been imported. And uh, here, if you go to Render Preview, you can see the environment of the HDRI. So we got some lighting provided by the HDRI. And uh, if we compare with the um, lighting of the original scene, okay, okay, yeah, uh, click on the, um, the camera and here, uh, in background image and make it full opacity. So we can see if we switch the plane on and off. You can see the lighting from uh, the HDI and then the lighting uh, from our scene. So if we compare both, do you think they got the same lighting? Not at all. Uh, for example, in our original scene, if you check the shadow, the shadow is going from right to left. The shadow is long and it's a harsh shadow. And uh, if we bring back the plane, with the lighting uh, of our HDI, you can see that the shadow, well, first of all, is going from uh, left to right, but it doesn't matter. But it's a very soft shadow. Very soft. I, you can barely see the shadow. So uh, this HDI doesn't work with our scene. We need to get another one. So let's try with another HDI. I've taken this HDI called uh, Street View this one and uh, let's see how it's gonna be so in shader editor replace the HDRI now we got a hard shadow but it's not at the right direction so to change the direction it's easy uh, click on the environment texture then ctrl T where if nothing happens when you hit ctrl T make sure you got the Wrangler add-on enable uh, preferences, Wrangler add-on, yeah, Wrangler add-on. It's a very useful add-on and uh, we'll use it a lot. So to rotate the sun, here you can see a rotation and we want to rotate along the z-axis. Yeah, you see? Okay. Like this, yeah. Now the sun is at the right direction. But uh, it's not long enough. Well, you could get another HDRI where the sun is lower in the sky. For example, uh, the I think the second street view, yeah, this one. Uh, the sun is lower in the sky, so the shadow will be a bit longer. Or otherwise, you can cheat, uh, like I'm gonna show you. Uh, for example, here, if you rotate in the Y axis, now. Yeah, now you can see the shadow is getting longer. And then, uh, yeah, of course, if you check the world, uh, in the HDRI is a bit weird, but uh, don't care. I mean, uh, in this case here, we don't care as we don't see any reflection. Uh, we are gonna make some smoke and uh, shield, and uh, none of them are gonna reflect anything. So it's fine, uh, this HDRI, I will keep this HDRI. Now that we have set up the scene with the camera position, the lighting and the rendering, uh, let's add a 3D model to our scene to check if everything we have done so far is good or not. 
For the model, we could add the season head, but uh, let's be original and get something on the net. Here, uh, I've chosen this model from Mix Mixamo. Uh, there are plenty of websites where you can download the free 3D models. And, uh, but if you want uh, characters with animation, Mixamo is the place to go. There are plenty of animation you can use. Uh, here I went for combat animation. Yeah, that's the one I've chosen. So click download. Uh, I choose 24 FPS as it's the closest frame, uh, frame rate that I got in my project. Now back in Blender and let's import the 3D model. So file, import, and it was a FBX file. Um, before importing, I like to put it in the new collection. So new collection, and I call it 3D model. Then as we have done some settings uh, for to get uh, the right perspective and distances for the environment, the model already comes up with the right proportion for the scene. So it looks like uh, what we have done previously um, was correct. Now I want to change the orientation of the character as he's uh, facing the bushes. There are several ways to do that. Uh, one of the ways is to um, if you press uh, shift a uh, mt and you can use any mt and then parent your um, armature to the mt and then move the mt uh, otherwise uh, you can also go come here in the object properties and in transform here delta transform and here you can change um, the location rotation scale without uh, without messing up your keyframes. So let's move it along the X. I'm gonna move it here, yeah. Like this okay, yeah. So let's hit a render to check it full screen. Okay, yeah, well I don't want to see the environment. I just want to see the light from it. So uh, Let's go here, and there in film, tick transparent. Render again. Okay, cool. Now we don't see the HDRI. Uh, yeah, the proxy, I can disable them. And uh, I don't want to see the ground. I mean, I, I don't want to see the ground, but I still want to see the shadow. And uh, if I disable the ground, I can't see the shadow anymore. So select ground, in here visibility, select shadow capture, and now hit render. And now we got the 3D model and it's shadow. So let's add this in our original scene. We will see more about compositing in part 4, but uh, we can already see a bit as it's uh, very simple. So go to compositing tab, uh, use node. Then if you control shift click on this, on this layer, you can see a preview in the background. Cool. Now let's get our rush, the white shot. So shift A, image sequence. Okay. Select everything. Select the whole sequence. Cool. Now control shift click on the image sequence and we can see the preview. It's too much zoomed actually. So press N here and zoom out. Now we want to put uh, this layer, the 3D model, on top of this layer, the white shot. So shift A, color, and alpha over. I think uh, the first input is the background so plug that to the white shot and the second input goes to the 3d model and now if you press ctrl shift click on this node voila uh, so the 3d model is a bit too much saturated actually uh, let's fix that uh, shift a color and this uh, hue saturation value and desaturate a bit 
Now it's much better. It looks like the 3D model belongs to the scene. Uh, then I remind you that the character comes with some animation. So let's render the whole animation. So let's see, it looks like the animation is about 70 frames. So in a render settings, from frame 1 to frame 70. PNG sequence is fine. Uh, alpha, I don't really need, but uh, yeah, let's keep alpha. Uh, oh yeah, in compositing. Uh, almost forgot. Yeah, go to compositing. And here, plug the composite node at the end. Otherwise, it's just going to render the 3D model. Uh, then to iterate fast, I'll use only 32 samples. Uh, I don't want to, waste, uh, to lose my time uh, for this rendering, uh, because uh, I remind you that I'm doing a tutorial for the One Piece effects, and uh, this, um, this model is just to test our scene. So I don't need high samples. So setting is done. Uh, let's render a frame just to check that everything is okay. Cool. Yeah, you can see that um, with uh, 32 samples, it's pretty quick. Uh, so it's good. Now let's render the whole animation. Go to render animation. It's going to render the 70 frames and uh, I think it's gonna be quick. I'll see you when it's finished. Okay, rendering is done. Got the whole animation of the 3D model on top of our original scene. Uh, and uh, it looks like the, um, the 3D model belongs to the scene. And this is due to all the work we have done. Um, the camera position, the lighting, some color correction. So we can say that our environment has been set up properly. So that's it for this part. Uh, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment. In the next lesson, we will start doing some effects with uh, smoke. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.